In this video, we'll be taking a look at the autosomal DNA predicted phenotype traits and GD match results of two uh, Huns from Hungary. Now, let's get into the first one. His Y DNA is R1A uh, subclade Z2125, which is the West Asian subclade. It's most typical in Kyrgyz people today. And his mitochondrial DNA is M7. And uh, this is what he's predicted to look like. Here you can see I depicted him with uh, very small eyes. That's actually the smallest that I could make them. Uh, with this uh, Cartoonify, Cartoonify website, so that's, that's the smallest I could get them to be. He's got dark brown eyes, snub-shaped nose, and black hair. With Snipper Free also predicted to have brown eyes, black hair, and white skin. He did not even have BH1, no blue eye haplotype 1, which means also no BH2, also no BH4, also no BH3. None of the blue eye haplotypes in OCA2. Um, he does not have the European hunter-gatherer ginger and blue eyes and pale skin gene, which is what I call IRF4. And he's actually got some lighter eye variants in SLC24A4. And in case you were wondering why I depicted him with such teeny tiny little eyes, that's because he's got a homozygous genotype for derived EDAR. He's got derived EDAR, he's got East Asian EDAR, East Asian facial traits, shallow shaped incisors, all that stuff. Does not have the European lactose persistence mutation. Uh, he's arguably not even a European when you're going to see his uh, GT match results, you're going to understand what I'm talking about. He does have the mutation that protects against myopia, uh, which is pretty cool. Uh, and uh, he does not have the European no-go learner mutation. Once again, nothing surprising here because he's arguably not even a European. Uh, and higher odds of schizophrenia, all that stuff. And uh, he does actually have A1A1 genotype in TAC1 variation of DRD2, which is very exotic. Uh, most humans, not even Europeans, most humans have A2A2 here, but he's got A1A1, higher odds of Parkinson's, ADHD, all that stuff. And he's got lower odds of psychosis in ACT1, which is a pretty typical, this is the only typical European genotype that he's got out of the ones I'm showing you here. And uh, another typical European genotype is that he does not have the sociopath gene. No derived OXTR, no sociopath gene. Moving on to polygenic traits, he's got a pretty high risk score for Crohn's disease. He's got a pretty high risk score for type 2 diabetes. Uh, he's got a high risk score for brain aneurysm. Uh, he's got a pretty high risk score for Parkinson's disease. Uh, he's got an average risk score for coronary heart disease. Uh, he's got an above average risk score for bipolar disorder. Uh, he's got a average risk score for schizophrenia. Uh, he's got a very high risk score for asthma. And he's got a very low risk score for type 1 diabetes. This is what he scores with Eurogene's K13 on GD match. As you can see, he's not scoring any of the Hungarian components, such as Baltic, North Atlantic. No, he's scoring East Asian, Siberian. That's the majority of him. East Asian, Siberian, Amerindian. That's what most of his ancestry is. Uh, he's a very... He's closest to Mongols, actually, followed by Altaians with the Oracle here. And he's getting modeled as a mixture of Altaian plus Hezhen, or Tuvinian plus Vietnamese. So basically, East Asian plus East Asian, not even a hint of anything Hungarian in his result. Uh, this is what he scores with MDLP K16. Uh, once again, the largest components are Siberian and Southeast Asian. This is a very typical result, actually, for uh, a Mongol or uh, somebody from Southern Siberia. With the Oracle, he's closest to Mongols, followed by Kalmyks. So what the conclusion here is that these um, Huns, at least this Hun in particular, is kind of resembling Mongols in terms of autosomal ancestry. He's getting modeled as a mixture of Mongol plus Nenets. Uh, Nenets are Arctic people in Siberia. And with the Eurogenes K36, most of, most of his components that he's scoring is uh, East Central Asian, Siberian, and East Asian. Those are the three biggest components that he's scoring. This is what he scores with Ancient Eurasia K6. Um, you can see the overwhelming majority of his ancestry is East Asian. It's 77% East Asian. And the non-East Asian components are Natufian, European hunter-gatherer, and Ancient North Eurasian. There's just not much of them. Uh, he's mostly East Asian, right? Uh, now, this is what he scores with Gidrosia K3, and we see more of the same. We see around 82% East Eurasian ancestry and... Uh, only 15% uh, or 16% West Eurasian ancestry in total. Now, uh, let's move on to the second guy. He's got the same Y DNA, different mitochondrial DNA. Uh, this is what he is predicted to look like. He is predicted to have uh, black hair, brown eyes. It's not dark brown eyes like the previous individual, but brown eyes, uh, snub-shaped nose and black hair, and white skin with snipper-free. 
uh, he got BH1, which is not so not so surprising because a lot of like Chinese people, Mongols, Native Americans have BH1. It's not nothing surprising here, but he's got BH2, which is really surprising because according to some uh, expert geneticists such as David Reich, uh, the BH2 mutation came about with European hunter gatherers, and he doesn't have much European hunter gatherer ancestry. He's mostly very uh, mostly very East Asian in his ancestry. Another thing you might have noticed is that unlike the other person, he's got no derived EDAR, no East Asian EDAR, no East Asian facial traits, uh, no shovel-shaped incisors, no straight hair. Well, maybe he did have straight hair, but he wouldn't have East Asian hair type, East Asian hair texture. Uh, he does not have the European lactose persistence mutation, so uh, probably lactose intolerant, or at least does not have the European one. Maybe he's got some East Asian lactose persistence mutation, I don't know just doesn't have the European one, and he does have the mutation that protects against myopia. Uh, so unlike the previous individual, he probably did not need glasses. Just like the previous individual, he does not have the European no-go learner mutation in DRD2, which means higher odds of schizophrenia, uh, more dopamine D2 receptors, which is not even necessarily bad. Uh, he's got A2A2 genotype in TAC1, which is also different from the previous individual. Once again, not a bad thing to have. Uh, lower odds of tardive dyskinesia, lower odds of ADHD, lower odds of Parkinson's, uh, normal amount of dopamine D2 receptors. Now, chimps, gorillas, apes, they tend to have A1A1 here, like the previous sample. He's got warrior genotype in um, COMT, so that means uh, val, val which means uh, quicker dopamine reuptake, less dopamine in the system. Uh, less dopamine overall, and he does have the sociopath gene in OXTR. Now, moving on to polygenic traits, he's got a slightly high risk score for type 2 diabetes, he's got a slightly high risk score for coronary heart disease, uh, he's got a high risk score for schizophrenia, uh, he's got a average risk score for Parkinson's disease, uh, he's got an average, maybe slightly high risk score for bipolar, uh, he's got a high risk score for cleft lip, He's got a average risk score for asthma. Uh, he's got a low risk score for type 1 diabetes. And he's got a average risk score, maybe low risk score for aneurysm, actually. And this is what he scores with Eurogene's K13. Uh, different from the previous sample because he's more Baltic, more North Atlantic, more West Asian. Um, more European components altogether. He's also scoring some Red Sea and South Asian, which is, I guess, sort of European-like. Um, he's closest to Mongols, followed by Altaians here, but the distance is pretty high uh, to all of these groups. And he's getting more of a mixture of Altaian plus Cambodian or Altaian plus Malai. Or actually Mongol plus um, Malta Boy 1. So he's more West Eurasian from, than Mongols, right? Uh, and this is what he scores with Eurogenes K36. He's actually even scoring some Eastern European and Fenoscandian. The Eastern European is the little tiny slice on the bottom. It's not the big slice on the, on the top. The big slice on top is Siberian. And uh, with MDLPK16, uh, this is what he's scoring. He's actually scoring 4% Northeast European, scoring some Neolithic, scoring some uh, step. And he's closest to Kyrgyz here. Not Mongols, but Kyrgyz. The previous sample was closest to Mongols. And Kyrgyz are sort of similar to Mongols. They are just a little bit more Western, at least from my understanding. He's getting more or less a mixture of Altaian plus uh, various Southeast Asians. And he's actually a lot less East Asian than the previous sample. The previous sample scored 77% East Asian here. He's only scoring 71. He's more ancestral North Eurasian, more Natufian, more European hunter-gatherer. He's closest to Altaians and Kyrgyz here. And he's actually getting more as a mixture of Altaians, Kalmyk, and various Siberian people uh, with various South Asians in the east of the Indian subcontinent. And this is what he scores with Gedrosia K3. Uh, he's actually a lot more West Eurasian than the previous sample. The previous sample, if you remember, was 16% West Eurasian. This guy is 21 and a half, so a lot more West Eurasian ancestry. Uh, still, despite this 21% West Eurasian ancestry, this individual is very, uh, very distant from modern Hungarians. Now, if you like this video, if you like my content, leave a like and subscribe. Also, you can download this sample and the previous sample in 23andMe format from link, which is in the description. Goodbye.